Marketers are in the business of behavior change. If you want to effectively spur people to take action, you have to understand the psychology of decision making. There's essentially four layers of our awareness that govern how we as humans make decisions. And I'm going to explain how it works and what you can do about it in this video. On the outermost level, you have what's called the periphery. Here, we're aware of something, but it's still on the fringes and we don't yet have affinity. Then you have the preference layer. Here, we prefer to do something or would like to do something, but it's still likely existential and we're still doing more imagining or planning or evaluating than acting. Going one layer inward, you have the priority circle. This is where we know we desire something and we've narrowed down options from preferences to favorites. Most marketers stop here, assuming that there's nothing more that they can do. But think about it. How many priorities do you have in an average day? If you're like most people, there's probably two to four to five plus things that you could categorize as a priority. It turns out that's actually not deep enough to get people to act. Why? Options, alternatives, and to-dos are hurtling at most people 24 seven. Most people operate within a world of constant change and chaos. Most people are busy. Most people don't care about you or your product, at least no more than the next thing on their personal list. So the final layer of the psyche to penetrate if you want to catalyze imminent action is to become a pressing need. We only take decisive action once something is pressing. Typically, that means the thing has to be intrinsically tied to or made to connect with our individual internal psychological drivers. It also has to be timely. If you're familiar with Maslow's hierarchy, you know it goes physiological, safety, social, esteem, and self-actualization. That's the order in which we're naturally wired to care for ourselves in the world. So if you can tie your positioning and your messaging to the right corresponding level on that pyramid for individual prospects, you can effectively couple your product with fulfillment of a need based on where that person is at. Work this granular is best done manually one-to-one. -one. It's not easy to automate at scale. To narrow down and become a pressing need for an individual requires continuous human follow-up with prospects. It requires a contextual awareness of an individual's current state. It requires you to connect the dots from where someone is to where they wanna go. And sometimes you'll have to paint that roadmap for them or together with them if they're open to working with you to do that. So let's talk about the spectrum of how these four levels work together and what consumers generally need to hear and feel at each level, plus what kind of marketing works best to reach them at each respective tier. Peripheral. This is the outermost level of our awareness. We're either unaware or just becoming aware of something. There's no motivator at this point because we can't take action on something that we don't know is a problem or an opportunity. Your biggest challenge here is gaining mind share, right? This is achieved through repetition, consistent content deployment, and zigging when everyone else zags. So being different. The only goal at this point is to capture and keep attention. You're looking to drive follows and subscribes at this stage so that you can then communicate with those people repetitively to present them with information that's geared to naturally move them progressively closer toward the pressing needs stage. For that reason, the hard sell is often difficult here because the value value hasn't yet sunk in when people are just becoming aware of something and one-to-one -one cold outreach will generally run up against a wall because trust hasn't been established yet. So this is where you have to be executing some sort of mass messaging. Even content dissemination is technically mass marketing since it's one to many. And you have to let people know that you even exist. Then you have to let people find you from what you put out. You gotta tell people you exist and then attract them inward, still empowering them to make the decision to follow you. This is why in my book, I advocate for using social media to generate awareness and requests to your private group, not necessarily or solely to do prospecting. This is why the hit rate for cold messaging on social media is generally so low. There's just no equity established yet. So when you're doing cold outreach or running ad campaigns, instead of pitching the sale, try just dropping an invitation of some sort to subscribe to your newsletter, to follow you on Instagram, to attend an upcoming webinar, to hop in your VIP group, or to check out your profile and let you know if they think that you can actually 
actually help them. All of these options empower them to proactively decide to take action. You're not forcing anything, you're just inviting them. The point is you're simply commanding attention top funnel, driving toward your content, and then converting that acquired attention into affinity where people gradually start to know you, like you, and trust you. With time, this prompts a shift into the next level of our matrix, the preference layer. Here, people would like to do something, to try something or buy something, but the internal incentive probably isn't strong enough to spur action. There's a big difference between saying you'll do something and actually doing it, right? And so even if people are subscribed to you or follow you, we can't expect that they're ready to take action just yet. Ideally, at this level, we're not yet cold pitching individuals either. We still have to establish need. We have to focus our overall messaging on the imminent threat which traditionally most marketers refer to as a problem. So this is an important mind shift. You have to narrow in on the specific problem that exists, which you solve for. Figure out how to talk about it, not as a problem, but as an imminent and urgent threat that's directly infringing on your audience's livelihood. And then talk about it as such within your marketing. Until you know what the threat to your audience is, then your marketing isn't going to have that sizzle that it needs to stop people in their tracks and get them to say, oh shit, I need to pay attention here. So the preference layer is about recognizing the gap that exists between where people are and where they need to be for success. And you've got to believe it too. Like this has to be your reason for being, your Rhizone Dietre to solve this pervasive threat. This can't be manufactured or artificially concocted. It has to be something that you believe with all your heart is wrong in the world. Some error that you're hell bent on fixing. Make it your mission and then share that mission in your messaging. So tactically, there's a few things to integrate here. You can tell stories of those you've already helped to change their lives. You can call out deficiencies of competitors and you can start referencing uh, what you provide that's different to solve the massive issue in the market. And you can start talking about how and why the risk of doing nothing is actually greater than the risk of taking action. And so as you do this consistently with high quality, well-produced content, a fraction of your audience will be ready to move into the subsequent tier, the priority circle. While some will require guidance here with personal touch points and conversations, some will self-select and do it on their own. So as things become a priority for your audience, you'll start to activate more inbound inquiries, right? Anything inbound indicates that somebody is in the priority level. This is also where you'll have to suss out those who may be open open to changing their lives and reach out to them proactively. So cold prospecting works best at this dimension of the decisioning framework. You can also look at longevity and engagement here to see who's followed you for the longest. You can look at your most engaged followers on social media, for example, which is an indicator of interest. Uh, you can nurture prospects inside of your VIP group, right? And these people will be more likely to want to engage because trust has already been cultivated. They already know you, they know the issue or the opportunity that's at hand, and they know that you can help. In terms of what angles to take with your CTAs here, the best motivators at this stage are scarcity, so capturing a fleeting opportunity, and FOMO, so taking advantage of something that others are already making forward progress on and changing their lives with. You don't want to apply too much pressure, but you do want to be doing strategic follow-ups, sharing content that busts objections, and that establishes the opportunity in blatant terms. Also, use lots of social proof at this stage. So showing recent customer successes to help tilt the edge here and create that sense of, hey, everyone else is doing it, I better get in the game too. People in the priority circle are convinced they need to do something soon to alleviate the problem, and they're probably open to change, but they still might be doing diligence or ironing out the kinks in their personal life to make room for a new thing, whatever it is. So if you can get intel on these personal aspects, which is only possible through one-on-one -on -one conversation, you can then work on framing what you have as a natural and obvious next best step to the problem that they're encountering. Only once that happens, so only once someone sees you as the best and most obvious antidote to the most pronounced issue in their life, will they take action. This is the pressing layer where people understand that they have to do it now or things will never change. Life or death is the strongest motivator here because if your survival's at stake, then that's a very strong incentive to act. But of course, not all problems are that grave, nor do all products solve that kind of issue. Going back to the hierarchy of needs, figure out which level you can best solve for and match that to where each individual is at. 
This is where you need to be with every prospective customer in an ideal world. So here you do want to use the hard sell and urgency is the best angle for CTAs along with specific offers, timers, expiration dates, and countdown clocks are three common tactics and they can really help to solidify action by giving that extra push that sometimes people need. As a note, the biggest mistake that companies make at this threshold right as they're about to cross the finish line or after they've gotten affirmative commitment is to change up the terms or bait and switch. Do not have any surprises once people get to this point. No hidden fees, no unexpected steps, nothing that might create friction or cause them to second guess that decision. It seems obvious, but I'm amazed at how many companies make this mistake. They either don't disclose certain items or they think just because someone is hooked, they can throw in extra fees and it'll all be good. It won't be good because you're going to get pushback against the forward positive momentum that you have with the customer, which is then gonna cause them to second guess the legitimacy of not just you, but the need itself. So make it very smooth and easy to check out, to invest and to get onboarded. So to summarize, the decision-making framework that we as humans undergo before we can take action is from periphery to preference, to priority, to pressing need. The way marketers must match that is to tell their story, get their audience primed and educated about the issue or opportunity at hand, work with them one-on-one -on -one to help unlock a vision to a new life dead ahead. And then once the need becomes pressing enough and people are on the hook, just hand them the keys to make it all possible. The purpose of marketing is to deliberately facilitate the movement of an audience from top funnel to bottom funnel. This must be done for your overall audience and for individuals within it simultaneously. The marketing machine must work on the macro level and the micro level together. One empowers the other. To succeed as a marketer, you have to believe in what you're providing and promoting, and you have to have the adaptability to cater how you talk about it to individuals. This is the only way to take people from a peripheral awareness to a visceral recognition that a pressing need is present in their lives and that they risk more by not addressing it than they do by taking bold, decisive action. That's not an easy task, but it is the mission at hand. All right, that's all I've got for you. Visit my website, michaelbecker.org, and don't forget to subscribe, share, comment, and like this video.